last time we had Robert Krulwich on our program, it was when Marlon Brando was here. Yes, it was. Two Marlon. elusive men. Yes. Right? Always so I glad to be included in the <laughs> Marlon Brando group. Yes. Well, I chased you down and said, yes. why don't you join us again? Because last time you talked about traffic. Yeah. And now it's going to be visitors from outer space, roughly the same topic. And doesn't it amaze you that something so unlikely as visits from outer space fascinates so many people so much? And there has been, by the way, a, a most recent of all visitation, not well reported here in the West, but it took place in the city of Omsk in Omsk. the Soviet Union. <laughs> this is not the one from last month, but just recently. A spaceship flew over the city, hovered over the town. The local paper reported that several hundred Omsk residents saw it, including, they say, an army major by the name of Viktor Loginov, whom the paper described, and I'm quoting now, the most authoritative man who can be trusted, the suggested meaning that this is a real sighting. Whether it was or whether it wasn't, on the last few Soviet sightings, when creatures got out of the spacecraft, they didn't this time, let me show you what the creatures look like as described by Soviet witnesses. This is a kid drawing. It looks like a human being with long arms bearing a yellow medallion. And a triangle mouth. And a triangle mouth, yes. Now, that's a Soviet visitor. Here in the United States, there are all kinds of alleged visitations, too, and people do draw what they saw. It's interesting to me how duplicate the images are, very similar to the Russian image. Let me show you the creature that allegedly abducted Betty Anderson of Massachusetts in 1967. This is her drawing, and from the front you can see a head with two eyes, a nose and a mouth, the eyeball rotates, I don't know, and then the, the, the creature seems to be wearing a school crossing guard uniform, but other than that, let's look at these drawings of space visitors. Now, you'll notice that they're all human-like figures. Look at this. Doesn't it tell you something, Connie, that so many of them look the same, they look like people, they look like us. Yeah, which means that people are making this up. Well, that would be my reaction. And you don't have to have actually met a outer space creature. I haven't met one. To know exactly what they're supposed to look like, right? Here are two big brain, bald-headed little guys with spindly bodies. Even George Lucas, in one of the most famous outer space scenes in the movies, the bar room scene from Star Wars, every creature has a head, a <laughs> pair of eyes, a nose in the middle, and, look, you see, a standard mouth right under the nose, like this werewolf, like this pig, and like this Vulcan, and inevitably, on the woodwinds, here again, are your basic hairless Martians. <laughs> And this is such a basic cliché. What is it about this Martian shape? I mean, they all have these big heads. Is it because they ha they're smarter than we are and they have big Apparently, brains? that is the reason. Was there any scientific evidence for this? Well, you know, I thought that if I called up any smart scientist, they would say an extraterrestrial visitor could have any shape in the universe. They doesn't have a big brain or anything in particular. I was amazed to discover that when I talked to some very heavy scientists, they said, well, we expect to see four basic characteristics of any visitor to our planet. I said, really? I said, yep, four. And they listed them. And I found them in, by the way, a technical paper called The Evolution of Technological Species, published by MIT Press. I decided to check with a biologist, a physicist, a NASA astrophysicist, two theoretical physicists, and a professor of natural history. They all agreed, as long as this is a creature coming in a spaceship designed by his society, or its society, arriving here and deliberately intending to, it's not a seedling or a computer chip or something, but a creature, said, expect these four characteristics. I said, what are they? Right, with the help of a sculptor, Mr. Tim Clark, here is the first item. <laughs> you is have it actually to... supposed to be a creature? Well, it's supposed to be part of a creature. In this case, to demonstrate the subject mass, do not expect the creature to be fire or electricity or a cloud, but expect him to have a body, bulk. Why? Well, the reason is, first of all, it would have to house a brain and a nervous system. It would store and release energy, and frankly, it would have to lift, pull, open doors. If something in the spaceship broke, it would have to fix it, and that would require some kind of bulk to move and push in the, in the room. But this thing can't really do that, can it? Not by itself, which brings us to our other subject. All right. Number two, the creature has to see. And it's a particular kind of sight they're talking about. This is a remarkably familiar pair of eyes if you get used to them. I have on my face an eyeball here on the right, a space in the middle, and then an eyeball on the left, right? No. Eye, space, eye, right? <laughs> right. So is this little guy. He has four eyes, and then there's a space, little hairs and stuff, and then four eyes. And this is apparently the basis of stereoscopic vision. The eyes could be side by side, or they could be top to bottom, but you have to have this configuration, the eyes, space, eyes, and facing the same direction. Why do you have to have the space? Well, that is exactly the question that I asked a theoretical physicist from the City University of New York, Mr. Michio Kaku. We have stereoscopic vision. We can see things in three dimensions. The fact that our eyes are separated by a distance means that our brains can coordinate two images and see things three-dimensionally. What does this give us? This gives us the ability to hunt, the ability to strategize, 
the ability to focus on a particular thing. And frankly, this stereoscopic vision allows this creature to say, oh, Connie Chung is two and a half feet from me. And this depth perception is very basic to intelligence and absolutely necessary to travel in the universe they believe. Third creature part. Third creature part is an arm, wing, a tentacle, and appendage of some sort. Here's <laughs> yeah. ours. Yeah. Now this, they say it has to be an, an, an arm, but it also has to have fingers or digits at the end. And they can't be gross or claw-like, just opening and closing. They've got to do subtle, careful work. And I asked Professor Kaku, why? Scientists believe that the essence of intelligence is hand-eye coordination. That is, the ability to see an object, to understand what it is, and then the ability to perform very delicate and fine motions on that object. The next item, and the final one, is locomotion. Your creature can't just tumble out of the spaceship. It has to be able to move about. It, here are three legs. I'm not exactly sure where the creature would be going with these three legs, but it might hop. But there it is. Yeah. And look, doesn't it strike you as odd that of all the possibilities in the universe, everybody who shows up in these drawings has two legs, and an eye, and another, like, like we do? I mean, consider the fantastic possibilities on Earth and anywhere in space. I mean, there are fantastical shapes that meet the four basic requirements, and they look nothing like the little men from Mars. There's an artist named Wayne Barlow who has a guide to extraterrestrials, what they could look like. And the creatures that he imagines getting off his spaceship would terrify people because they're so weird. But after a while, you look at their faces, and if they stick around, as Fred Astaire used to say, you could adjust and you might even like them. That face, that wonderful face. It shines, it glows all over the place. But never will these eyes behold a sight that could replace that face, that face, that face, that face. That face. Oh, that face. In a nutshell, what I am saying here is the next time there's a close encounter of whatever kind, and some guy gets off a spaceship from outer space, Russia, America, wherever, if he looks like the creature that they saw in Russia, one of these spindly guys with the long arms and little antennae on his head, I say, this is just my opinion, fraud, I don't care, didn't happen. But if some creature like this guy here gets off the spaceship, then I say, call me right now, because if he looks like that, this is so different from the cliches that we've seen, Maybe there's an outside, outside, outside chance they've arrived. This could be it. <laughs> and if that guy gets out of the spaceship, I want to interview him. I mean, you did Brando. I want him. You got it. Thank you. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back.